Hey y'all, let's take a look at conjunctions and, conju and uh, grammar. You know what conjunctions are, like you know, and, button, or they join two sentences. And uh, we're gonna use conjunctions in the sense of and with our uh, algebra two. And what we're gonna do is, and you can, you know how to do both of these already. So if you wanna copy this down, you can. Pause it if you need to. But we're gonna do both of these one at a time, and then we're gonna figure out where the and is. In other words, where do where do these intersect? That's where our answer is. So <clears throat> let's take the first one here. We can go ahead and write negative x, move this over. That's going to be negative, or excuse me, great, or left center or equal to positive one. All right. And if we know if we flip this, we have an x, we have a negative one, and we have a greater than or equal to. So I'm just going to use that right now. I'm going to put that on the graph. We are allowed to use integers, the domain's integer. So greater than or equal to negative one. So it can be this, it can be this all the way across, you know, the entire thing like this. I won't take too much longer, here we go. And boom, okay, I'm use a different color. So here is what the second one is going to look like. And we use that, oops, I'm losing my, uh -oh. I lost it there. Okay, so here's my other one. This is gonna be x minus two is less than one. We know to move the two over, and that turns into positive two, so x is less than Three. And again, we are allowed to use integers. We're not allowed to use three, but we're allowed to use this too. That's good. And we're allowed to use that. And we're allowed to use that. And we're allowed to use that. And we can, again, just keep right on going all the way down here, you know, to the end of time or whatever. Okay. Now you notice there are only four of these that match. Okay. That intersects. Okay. That is our set of answers right there. Negative one, zero, one, and two. And you'll graph those. And where those intersect, that is your answer because that meets the and criteria. All right, let's try another one. Sometimes they will set these up for you and it's like one long inequality, not even separated by anything. So what you're gonna do is you're going to break these up into two chunks, all right? So you'll take negative two is less than x minus two. And you'll also do x minus two is less than or equal to four. All right. Probably should have written those in different colors, shouldn't I? Yeah, let me go ahead and do that. Okay, we'll try red again. All right, so we got negative two is less than x minus two. Okay. All right, well, let's do this uh, on the left first. So if you want to visualize this as having been flipped, you can look at this and go, that's x minus two is greater than negative two. If you were to kind of like walk on the other side of this thing and look you know, from the other way, that way would be fine. Anyway, you move, you move this over, so we have, that goes over. We have x is greater than zero. That's our first equation. So we're allowed to use real numbers. So if x is greater than zero, it looks like this, right? Oop, well, stay on the line if you can. Okay, let's do the other one. And this one, if you move this over, it'll be x is less than or equal to six, okay? Well, less than or equal to six, we're allowed to use reals. So it's equal to six, right? We can do the, you know, the filled in dot there. So less than or equal to six is this. Well, I'm assuming you stay on line. So anyway, there's your intersection right here. And this part is the answer, where those both meet, okay? Here's another one. This is called a disjunction. This is not a conjunction, it can be either. So we're gonna have a graph with two chunks to it. Instead of going, oh, the answer is where they meet, we're gonna have a graph with two different answers, okay? So let's do it. Negative x is greater than or equal to three. Well, we can probably do that mentally pretty quickly. X is going to be less than or equal to negative three, all right? And we are allowed to use reals, okay? So x less than or equal to negative three, and we're allowed to color that in, and there we go. Okay, let's use the other one. And negative x is less than negative one. Of course, we can do that mentally too. X is greater than positive one. All right, I'm allowed to use reals, okay? We're not gonna be able to use the one. It's open circle. There we go. There are our two answers. That's a disjunction, all right? Let's try another one, another disjunction. Okay, well, we got a negative x. We're gonna move that over. Uh, greater than or equal to 2. And of course, let's go ahead and change that up. So that's going to be x is less than or equal to negative 2. And there we go. So x is less than or equal to negative 2. So I can include that. 
I'm allowed to use oop, integers only. So here we go. That's my drawing, and you know, I'm just going to stop right there. You know it includes all the rest of those. All right, the other part of the disjunction will go green this time. X is going to be greater than 3. Greater than 3. So we can't use 3. We can use 4, we can use 5, we can use 6, and you know, so on and so forth. So those are disjunctions. All right. Let's go to the last part of this is some more geometry here. Let's go back and review two basic things first. And we have an instance on the left to where you have uh, two chords intersect inside a circle. And we have on the right, the intersect outside of the circle. Well, a lot of these, if you ever, like, if you're on an SAT or a geometry test or something like that, if they're drawn to scale, you can pretty much predict about what this is. You know, it's about 90 degrees, right? But the idea is if they intersect inside the circle, what you'll do is you will take these, add them together, and divide by two. In other words, find the average. What's right between 80 and 90? And of course, the answer is 85. So x is 85 degrees. If they intersect outside the circle, you don't do uh, 170 plus 90. You do 170 minus 90, and you divide that by 2. And that'll be 80 divided by 2, which means x is going to be 40 degrees. Okay, just a reminder on those. Okay, we have a slightly different uh, shakeup on what we're doing on these. And this, this is really, I mean, this is one of the like mysteries of math. This is like a miracle. I don't understand this at all, how this works, but I'll be doggone if it does, okay? If you have internal chords like these that intersect each other, okay? Look at those. Look, look on the left, okay? Here's something unbelievable that happens. Now, if you were to measure this, let's pretend that this were 12 inches, or excuse me, 2 inches. If you did that, this length right here would be 6 inches, exactly 3 times that amount, if that's true. You could draw another chord, and you could somehow make sh exactly sure, like hold a ruler and write at the 3, and turn the ruler so where the absolute end of the ruler touched the edge of the circle, and you could measure 3 inches. If you were to keep going and keep going, going with that and draw it out, this would be 4 inches exactly. Okay, And here's the, here's the concept. If you multiply these two numbers, 2 and 6, in other words, this is 2 inches, let's say, that's six inches. You will get exactly the same thing as if you multiplied this by this. Absolutely a miracle. I, I, it's, I don't know how that works, but it does. So two times six, 12 is obviously the same thing as three times four, 12. Okay, you can use that information to find the value of things like x, because let's say this is three inches here, and this is seven inches here, and you can go, well, this is five inches here, what's the value of x there? Well, all you need to do is set up an equation you have 5 times x is equal to 7 times 3, or 21. Just divide by 5, and that's going to be 21 over 5. If you wanted to actually you know, do the arithmetic or figure out the number, it's going to be 4.2. And that, that would be absolutely what you would get if you were to measure that out perfectly. So, miracle, miracle of numbers. To me, this is like one of those things where, oh, a, if you have a, the volume of a cylinder, if you stick a cone in there perfectly, it's exactly one-third. That is just blows my mind. Anyway, I'm easily amused, uh, so it might not blow yours. Here's one, too. Here's the second type. These are external secants. This is even more bizarre. I don't know if you're the puzzle type, but if you're game, you could pause this and see if you could figure out how these two equal. In other words, the three distance and the five distance, or somehow you have to do something with them to equal the two distance and the 10 distance. If you're game, pause it and try to figure out why. Okay, I'm assuming you pause or maybe not, but anyway, here's how this works. You will take the three and you're gonna multiply it by both of these together, both of those links together. That's going to equal, can you figure out what I put in there next? What goes with a three or matches? It's a two, right? Okay. Now, what should I put inside these parentheses? Not 3, 3 plus 5, but 2 plus 10, right? Okay, so <clears throat> 3 times 3 plus 5 is 3 times 8, or 24. 2 times 2 plus 10 is 2 times 12, or also 24. Absolutely killer, okay? So pause it in a second here, and go ahead and try to use this exact formula to find out what x is. So go ahead and pause it.
and try it. Okay, well you would do like this. You would say, okay, that's gonna be four times four plus x, right? That'll be three times three plus five. Okay, so four times four is 16, four times x is four x. That's gonna equal, we already know that's 24, right? Okay, that should be an x there, okay. So 4x equals 24 minus 16, which is 8. So x is equal to 2. By the way, when you're doing these, and let's say it's a test or something like that, kind of make sure it's reasonable. You know, if this is 2, you know, does this thing, is it about half of 4? That should, you know, work for you. By the way, you can do that on an SAT or ACT or whatever. You can actually use your pencil or your finger or something like that and measure things and figure out exactly how long they are or pretty good, pretty good estimate and then look down and see A, B, C, or D, which one's the best answer. You don't have to know geometry at all. So anyway, okay. All right, this is a tangent. A tangent is, this is not the tangent where it's you know, the opposite over the adjacent. Another definition of the word tangent is a line that crosses another shape at exactly one point. So the line that is eight units long is the line that hits that circle exactly at one, one point, okay? Here's the weird thing about this, all right? This, if it's tangent, in other words, it's just one point, not two points, okay? You're gonna, you're gonna see this. This is the way you do it. It's not anything other than just squaring it. Since there's nothing to, you know, on this one, you had something to mess with. You could go, oh, three times three plus five. Oh, two times two plus 10. You could go, oh, four times four plus X and eight times, like there's nothing else there. There's only that. So what this is, is four times four plus X, just like normal. Since it's only hitting it at one point, it's gonna be eight squared. That's a tangent, you square it. Okay, so write those down and make sure you know them and so on. Okay, so let's do this. We got 16, we got plus four X, we got eight squared, which is 64. Okay, four X is equal to 64 minus 16, which is 48. And X is gonna be 12. And again, you know, just see if it passes the smell test, right? This is four, right? Well, here's a four, here's a four, and there you go, boom, that's it, okay. All right, try A, pause it, and see what you get. Okay, this is one of those conjunctions, so it has to meet both conditions, okay? So we have negative four X, I'm moving this over, and I'm getting a three. And I'm flipping this, and I'm getting greater than or equal to, and I'm getting negative three, all right? So that's my first one. So I'm allowed to use integers, okay? Let's see here. So greater than or equal to three, negative three, excuse me. That's gonna be this, that will be that, this will be that, and you know, here we go. I'm not gonna go all the way, I just, that's good enough, you know what I mean. Okay, the second one will be this one. That goes over there and gives me x is less than two. I'm allowed to use integers, so less than two is gonna be this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. You just keep going and going and going and going. And you see, you see, of course, that, oops, almost went too far there. This is your and. That's where they both meet the conditions. Okay, all right, let's try B. Give that a shot, pause it. All right, here's the first part. Negative one is greater than x minus one. And I'm gonna go ahead and just flip this. x minus one is greater than negative one. So x is greater than zero. That's my first one. I'm allowed to use reals. So greater than zero means it is doink like that. Okay, the second one, I'll use red. Good old red. X minus one is less than or equal to three. That goes over. X is less than or equal to four. I'm allowed to use reals, so X is less than or equal to four. And that is here. And it goes right there all the way to the end. And here we go. All right. Okay, try C and D. And uh, pause it, we'll come back together in a second. All right, well, these are being multiplied inside here. So we have seven times X 
is our first, and that equals 4 times 3, which is 12. So x is going to be 12 over 7, or a little less than 2. That's a reasonable answer, since this is 7, this is less than a third of that. There we go. Okay, pause it and try B. All right, D looks like this. 4 times 4 plus y equals, that's a tangent, 6 squared. So 16 plus 4y equals 36. All right, 4y equals 36 minus 16. So y is going to equal 5. Does it pass the smell test? Is this 5 in length? You look at this and you go, yeah, it's a little long. Yep, that does it. Okay. All right, I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.